Great Lakes Prepping here. Obviously, I'm big on preparedness, but I'm not only preparing for survival, life and death scenarios, I'm also preparing for comfort. We're coming into the tail end of summer, but it's been a pretty hot summer. And I started thinking, you know, my entire house is set up with a backup generator, a system that I built a few years ago and it works very well. But it will power everything in the house except for one thing, and that's the central air conditioner or uh, probably even any window air conditioners uh, if I chose to try to add any. So I was thinking, what could I do on a sweltering hot day if I don't have any air conditioning in this house, well, I could live without it, I would survive, but what if I could sort of cheaply and sort of easily make something that would really take the edge off of the heat on a sweltering day like that? So I started looking around and I found a few interesting options. Uh, and so in this video, I wanna talk about a DIY five gallon bucket air conditioner. In concept, a bucket air conditioner is pretty straightforward. Take a bucket, fill it with ice, and blow air past it. While the contraption known as a swamp cooler is a bit more in-depth and uses evaporative cooling, the bucket air conditioner simply uses ice to cool the air that a fan is blowing. In its simplest form, all you really need is a 5-gallon bucket, an insulating liner so your ice doesn't melt really quickly, a fan, and a couple PVC tubes. But because I have a tendency to make things more complicated, I decided to make my version of a bucket air conditioner a little more elaborate. The features I wanted to have were a low profile, permanently attached fan, adjustable speed settings on the fan, and air vents that could be either directional or closed completely. I also considered making it easily work with my truck or my home's 12 volt solar powered backup system, but I decided to just go with regular 110 and maybe revisit the 12 volt idea at a later time. And anyhow, both my truck and my home already have 110 volt outlets. So I got this five inch cooling fan, which came with a power cable and the option to add a variable speed dial. It came with all the mounting hardware and fan grills, which was all very convenient. Surprisingly, the fan only cost $18 on Amazon, which is a fantastic price considering what I got. A quick note about the bucket and lids that I bought. Everyone seems to use Home Depot orange buckets for everything, but since I'm building an air cooler, why would I want a flaming orange color? Cool blue was the obvious choice in my opinion, so I went with Lowe's. However, I learned something about the Lowe's buckets, or more specifically, their bucket lids. They have changed their lids from the classic paint bucket lid that is impossible to remove with a very flimsy, lightweight lid that has barely any lip and comes off with barely any effort. I ended up actually liking this because I don't need the lid to stay attached to the bucket no matter what but I was a little skeptical about whether it was sturdy enough to mount my fan to it, so I decided to make it reinforced by simply doubling them up. With some small nuts, bolts, and washers, I easily attached two nested lids together, and now it's plenty rigid for my application. I will note that I would never trust these flimsy Lowe's lids in a million years with a five-gallon bucket full of actual paint or any other heavy sloshing liquid. After cutting four and a half inch circles in the lids and affixing them together, it's time to mount the fan. The fan mounts in place with four narrow bolts and nuts. There are two fan grills, one for the top and one for the bottom. Mounting it was very easy and it feels very secure and sturdy. Next up is cutting the holes for the vents. Rather than simply using PVC pipes, I opted for fittings that require two and a half inch holes. Using a hole saw, I quickly cut holes in the bucket and then use those holes as a template for cutting holes in the styrofoam insert. After vacuuming up the colossal mess of styrofoam bits that this created, it's time to attach the fittings to the bucket. A quick note about the foam insert. I found a couple of different types of these styrofoam inserts that are sold for turning an ordinary bucket into an insulated cooler. They don't seem to be commonly available at any stores I ordinarily shop at, so I bought one online. I ended up getting what seemed to be the thicker, sturdier brand. I'm quite happy with it as it's a perfect fit and it doesn't seem flimsy at all. The best price, including shipping, that I found was from a sporting goods retailer called Shields. Since the fittings aren't especially snug in the holes, I had to seal up the gap and affix the fitting securely in place. I considered various types of glue, epoxy, and silicone caulk, but ultimately I used a good old-fashioned glue gun. I laid a thick bead of hot glue around the fittings on the outside of the bucket and the inside of the foam insert. This ended up working great, 
The fittings are very secure, and no air seems to escape from around them. At this point, the construction of the bucket air conditioner is complete. All that's left to do is give it a test run. The function is simple. Fill the bucket with ice, no higher than the bottom edge of the vent holes, put the lid in place, and turn on the fan. The main reason I chose to use threaded fittings instead of basic PVC pipes was because I wanted the ability to use a couple accessories. Specifically, I wanted to be able to close off one or more vent, and I wanted to have a directional adjustment for airflow. To achieve this, I just added some more fittings. To close off a vent, I just screw in these plugs. For directional airflow, I screw in an adapter and then add the 45 degree elbow piece. I ended up really liking this feature because it allows me to direct multiple vents directly at my head. While I'm sure some cool air is going to come out of this thing, there are two criteria I'm really interested in testing. One, how cold is the air coming out of the vents? And two, how long will the ice last before it needs to be replenished? I tested the temperature several times over a period of about eight hours. I used three different types of thermometers to try and get a reasonably accurate reading on the temperature. I used a digital room thermometer that measures ambient temperatures. I used a digital meat thermometer, and I used an infrared temperature gun. All three came back with pretty similar results. Depending on exactly where I positioned the thermometer, the readings tended to hover between about 64 and 67 degrees Fahrenheit, though it did go as low as 61 degrees at one point. Considering that it was 82 degrees outside and about 76 degrees in the house, I call that a win. Since this bucket is insulated, the air output temperature should not change wildly depending on the ambient temperature of the room, so if my house was 84 degrees, for example, I should still expect the air coming out of the bucket to be about 64 to 67 degrees. To determine how long the ice would last before needing to be replenished, I simply looked in the bucket every few hours and observed the level of the ice. After five and a half hours, the ice had only gone down a couple of inches. Temperature measurements taken at different stages of melt did not seem to fluctuate much, which I found interesting and encouraging. This means I could expect that same cool air even after several hours of melting have taken place. After about 24 hours, the ice had only melted about halfway. At this point, the bucket insert contained basically a solid chunk of ice floating in some water. I decided to end the experiment at this time. I could get many, many hours of cool air from one batch of ice cubes, and that's exactly what I'd hoped for. My ice maker can produce twice this amount in one day, so I feel pretty confident that ice shortages will not be among my problems. All in all, I'm quite happy with how this came out. The fan is powerful, but not overkill. Upon reviewing the video I shot, I can tell you that it seems much louder in this video than it does in person. It's not terribly loud at all, and it's no more annoying than a standard table fan, in my opinion. I went into this project thinking it would be an interesting novelty that's maybe just kind of fun to build, but after testing it out, I think this really is a viable option for staying cool on a hot day, should my central air conditioning not be usable for some reason. And while she usually has little interest in my tomfoolery if it doesn't involve food, even Lena came around to investigate. So there you have it, the five gallon bucket air conditioner, deluxe version. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked what you saw, click the subscribe button and stay up to date on all of our videos. Check out the blog at greatlakesprepping.com and the Great Lakes Prepping Facebook page. Thanks again for watching and for all of your continued support. And until next time, keeping it cool, it's Great Lakes Prepping.